okay so this is also a question paper example from the previous year question paper so the statement goes like this a field test on two mechanically coupled dc series motor with their fields connected in series and one machine running as motor while the other running as generator gave the following data the motor armature current 40 amperes armature voltage 200 volts voltage drop across fields 15 volts armature current 32 amps armature voltage 160 volts voltage drop across field 15 volts okay. then armature resistance is 0.4 ohms calculate the efficiency of each machine so this is the uh, problem statement first draw the we'll draw the circuit diagram uh, i will do a small change here instead of taking armature voltage i will take this as motor voltage take motor voltage 200 volts slightly i will change the statement motor voltage equals to 200 volts now there are two machines motor mechanical mechanically coupled with generator So armature current 40 amps, motor armature current 40 amps, motor voltage 200 volts. So this is V1, this is 200 volts, drop across field 15 volts. Okay. Then. The supply voltage V that I have to find out. Then I have a generator. To which the load is connected RM. So generator armature current 32 amps and voltage 160 volts. Okay, so this is given. So we can write given things. So given I1 is 40. I2 is 32, V1 is 200, VSE is 15 ohms, RA 0.4 ohms. So these are the given things. So as a solution, therefore, V is equal to v1 plus vsc which is 200 plus 15 that is 250 volts this is my supply voltage v. Okay. next here now we have to find stray losses So stray losses, total stray losses WST is equal to okay, 
टोटल लॉसेस माइनस कॉपर लॉसेस सो हियर टोटल लॉसेस आर डब्ल्यू टी माइनस डब्ल्यू सी यू टी आर टू फाइंड द टोटल कॉपर लॉसेस सो टोटल कॉपर लॉस डब्ल्यू सी यू टी इज इक्वल्स टू फील्ड कॉपर लॉस एंड आर्मेचर कॉपर लॉस सो इट इज आई वन स्क्वायर आर ए प्लस वी एस सी इंटू आई वन प्लस आई टू स्क्वायर आर ए आर ए जी आर ए एम जस्ट फॉर द नेम से टिकेट प्लस वी एस सी इंटू आई वन इन द जनरेटर फ्यूर ऑल्सो द करंट इज आई वन ओन दिस इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू सी टोटल सो आई वन इज फोर्टी एम्स फोर्टी स्क्वायर इंटू पॉइंट फोर प्लस फिफ्टीन इंटू फोर्टी प्लस आई टू स्क्वायर इज थर्टी टू स्क्वायर इंटू पॉइंट फोर प्लस फिफ्टीन इंटू फोर्टी इक्वल्स टू टोटल कॉपर लॉसेस is 2249.6 that's right. so total losses wt is equals to i can write v into i1 minus v to i2 so 215 into 40 Minus thirty-two into one sixty. So W T is equals to. Three four eight zero. Stray losses, total stray losses. W S T is equal to. Okay. So three four eight zero minus two two four nine point six. One two three zero point four. One two three zero point four. Watts. So stray loss in each machine. WS is equals to WST by two equals to six fifteen point two. Lights. Okay. So then, motor efficiency and generator efficiency. So motor efficiency. So motor input. Is equal to V one I one. It is not V into I one now. It is V one I one. So. V1 is 200. Motor voltage is 200. Into I1 is 40. It is 8000 watts. Okay. 
then motor losses. WM will be equals to upper loss plus stray loss. Yeah, or in detail if you want, armature copper loss plus field copper loss plus stray loss. And because we have seen in all the machines in all the tests, I have written directly. So copper loss is I1 square RA plus VAC into I1 plus WS equals to 40 square into 0.4 plus 15 to 40 plus 615.2 1855.2 yes 1855.2 Therefore, motor output, uh, let this be P in and this be P out. So P in minus losses, input minus losses. So this is 8000 minus 1855.2. Six one double four point eight. Six one four four point eight watts. So this is P out. So efficiency. P out by P. Six one four four point eight divided by eight thousand into hundred. Seventy six point eight one. So percent. Seventy six point eight one percent. All are getting same. Yes, sir. Next, generator efficiency. So, generator output we will be having P out is equals to V2 I2. Which is equals to one sixteen to thirty two. Is five one two zero. Yeah. Generator loss. Copper loss plus tray loss. Stray losses are also known as rotational losses. Okay, you should uh, remember that. Stray losses generally are also known as rotational losses. So this is I2 square RI plus VSE into I1. Field of generator is in series with motor. So I1 plus WS. Thirty two square into point four plus fifteen uh, yeah, fifteen to forty plus six fifteen point two. One six two four point eight. One six two four point eight. Watts. So this is WG.
generator input p in is equals to generator output p out plus generator losses wg So it is five one two zero plus one six two four point eight. Six seven four four point eight. So P uh, P in is six seven four four point eight watts. Therefore, efficiency of generator is equals to P out by P in. That is five one two zero divided by six seven four four point eight. Seventy five point nine one percent. Same we are getting. Yes, sir. Seventy five point nine one percent. Yeah. This is uh, all about the. Testing of DC series motor using field test. Okay. So at this point of time, I will stop the DC motors. One test is remaining called a retardation test, which should be conducted on DC shunt motor. Okay. So that we will look at the end uh, because I want to quickly move to the second part of module two, which is induction motor. Okay. So. You have studied induction motor in basic electrical engineering. No, rather than you have studied, I should say it was taught induction motor in basic electrical engineering. I don't know whether you studied it or not because you did not write exam in that semester. But induction motor. Okay, so next part we'll move to is uh, induction motor. It is the second motor we'll be studying in this uh, course. We know what motor is already. We have seen its operation, its principle, everything. Induction motor op operates on the principle of mutual induction. So it is called induction motor. Okay. Principle of mutual induction. Exactly like a transformer. Okay. Principle of mutual induction. Now this induction motor is known as the working horse of industry. Okay, this is known as working horse of industry. See, there are three motors we have. Uh, excluding per special purpose motors, let us consider the general purpose motors. What we have in our uh, uh, fields, okay, fields in the sense technical field, not in agricultural fields. So we have three types of motors. One is DC motor. Other one is induction motor. Other one is synchronous motor. All these three we will study in one already we studied. Two more we have to study. Okay. So the DC motor is not widely used in the all applications because of its DC supply and commutation problems. I can't operate DC motors at higher voltages and for larger currents. Because uh, commutation is happening mechanically, hence commutation problems will arise definitely, and there is a limitation in the applications of DC motor. Other type of motor, uh, 
supply system and commutation impose limitation. Supply system and commutation impose limitation for general purpose applications. DC motor is a DC motor because of its commutator. Otherwise, it would have been AC motor. But commutator itself is the reason for which there is a limitation upon its applications. Okay, so I can't use a DC motor in all the applications because of commutation problem. Second, supply system. Supply system is largely AC. So if I use, if I want to use a motor in my house as a water pump, then I can't use a, a DC motor because my supply system is AC. Okay, Because my supply system is AC, so I can't use a uh, DC motor. Mo okay. So that will impose a limitation. Now, second motor is synchronous motor. Synchronous motor operates at only one speed. Operates at only one speed. Okay? That is synchronous speed. That is synchronous speed. Okay. So here, uh, variable speed operation is not available. Okay. okay. Cannot be used. For variable speed applications. Though the supply system is supporting synchronous motor, though the supply system is supporting synchronous motor, but its operation is not supporting general purpose applications because we need variable speed uh, uh, operation at various applications. Now, only remaining motor is induction motor. Okay, this supports supply system. Supported by supply system. Okay. Uh, simple in operation. And variable speed. And variable speed. So, induction motor is so widely used okay, that it will cover almost more than 70 to 80 percent of motor applications with it. Okay. Even in our electric vehicle today, most of the electric vehicles use induction motor. Okay. No doubt, battery is there. You may ask, how can an induction motor run on a battery? Because battery gives us a DC. Induction motor runs on AC. So there is an inverter which will convert the battery DC power to AC power and that is fed to induction motor. Okay. Why induction motor is used? Because it is mechanically very strong. That is mechanically very strong. Okay. So therefore, and even operation is very simple. Okay. 
so therefore induction motor is used so induction motor is known as working horse of the industry so most of the processing industries or mechanical industries are using induction motor because of simple uh, operation availability of supply system and it can operate at variable speeds okay then what is induction motor what are the different parts of induction motor or construction yes stators and rotor obviously motor is having stator and rotor what are the types of rotors we have for induction motor squirrel cage induction motor Abdul Rahim. Abdul Rahim. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what are the two types of rotors in induction motor? Um, I don't know, sir. No, no. Okay. Ajay Kumar. Simple thing, sir. Yes. What are the two types of induction? Simple phase rotor and wound rotor. Yes. Simple cage rotor and wound rotor. Simple cage rotor. Simple cage rotor and wound rotor. Wound wound rotor. Is it simple cage rotor? Simply, sir. Simply. Simply cage rotor. And second is. Wound rotor. Sure. Yes. Are you Shagarwal? Are you Shagarwal is there? Your name is been reflecting here. Rishav Prasad. Rishav Prasad. Yes. Yeah. What are the two types of rotors? So is it right what he has told? Simply cage rotor and wound rotor are the two types of induction motors. Yes. Rishab. Karan Kishore. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it right what he told? Simply cage rotor and wound rotor are the two types of induction motors? Sir, it is squirrel cage motor and wound rotor, sir. It is squirrel cage rotor and wound, and wound rotor. I don't know from where he got simply cage rotor. A squirrel cage rotor 
and wound rotor. Okay, so these are the two types of rotors we have in its construction and stator is the same. Okay. Stator is same for both rotors. Okay. So if you see the stator of uh, induction motor. Okay. It will be a hollow cylinder okay, which will be having the slots punched in its inner periphery. Okay. So it will be a hollow cylinder. In which The slots are punched in its inner periphery. Okay. And these slots will be carrying the stator winding, which is three phase distributed. So on. So it will carry the conductors or winding, which is three phase distributed. So on. Okay, so on it will carry. So it will be having a base plate. It will be having terminal box. So where we give three phase supply RYB from the source. It will be having a lifting eye. It means a hook. So this is frame or yoke. This is okay. The outer circle is frame or yoke. This is stator core. These are stator slots. These are stator winding. Okay, so stator winding is made up of either copper or aluminium. Okay. Stator code is made up of silicon steel laminations okay. to avoid eddy current losses. Frame is made up of cast iron. So silicon steel is a soft steel, it is a soft iron, okay. whereas cast iron is hard, it is hard iron, it is very hard and brittle. So that it, the outer core, outer uh, cover or yoke will protect the inner part of the motor from the external impact. Okay, If there are any mechanical external impacts, it will protect. So now, this uh, stator winding is using aluminium or copper. This is a three phase distributed winding. So, if this is a distributed winding, what is the other type of winding we have?
Yes. Concentrated. Concentrated. Okay. So, what is the difference between these two? Do we use concentrated winding anywhere in any rotating machine? Why we use a distributed winding in induction motor and alternators? Why not we use concentrated winding? Yes. Monica. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why don't we use concentrated winding in working machines? I don't know, sir. Nirja? Nirja? Yes, sir. Any idea why we use a distributed winding? Why not concentrated winding? No, sir. No. So, whether you write exam for all, or you don't write exam, the part of the study will be always important to study the further things. So even in the last semester, I requested many a times to go through all the lecture videos of basic electrical engineering. Even this time, when I started this motors, I asked you to go through the uh, lecture videos of your basic electrical class, at least four machines, all four machines. I don't know how much you followed that. Uh, now, in these such cases, you will come and struck up. Okay? And if basics are uh, well forgotten, because you see, when you forget is, when you try to remember once and later you forget. But the problem is you never try to remember that. Because there were no exams. And throughout this learning process of engineering, you have to carry that burden. If you don't go back and look at those things once again. Because these things will come at various steps of your study. These you need in most of the cases. Wherever machine comes into picture, these all fundamentals are the must to be known by each and everyone. Okay. So it doesn't mean that now I will teach you. Uh, there is no meaning in doing that. Okay. Uh, I would have done that by taking some extra lectures. But uh, seeing your interest in learning so far, I don't want to uh, put that time in the, going back and studying those things. Instead, I will cover the part of syllabus which is there for this semester. Okay, and I will share my lecture videos of basic electrical engineering in which these all fundamentals of motors, these uh, uh, concentrated, distributed things are well explained. If you get interest and you feel those are important uh, to study, you can go through those lectures okay? or else uh, uh, it is up to you. Okay, but at this point of time, I cannot explain all those things. Uh, once again, that is not necessary also as of now, but definitely you need those things in the very near uh, future. Okay. Yeah. Coming back here. So this is using a distributed three phase winding. Okay. In one sentence, I can say distributed winding will always be helpful in eliminating the harmonic content in EMF induction. If I use concentrated winding, a lot of harmonics will come. And the average power developed because of concentrated winding will be very less. Okay. So
so to get the more average power and a sinusoidal induced emf waveform okay if i use concentrated winding the induced emf will be non sinusoidal that is harmonically affected any non sinusoidal wave is harmonically affected okay with respect to sinusoidal wave so therefore we use a distributed winding how distributed winding will help you will get to know from that uh, lecture if you go through that okay so this is all about stator and we have two types of rotors okay uh, one is slip ring or wound rotor construction is very important but construction is not part of the syllabus because you studied construction in basic electrical engineering it is not put in the syllabus so i will not be dealing construction in detail again i will be sharing the lecture videos okay so slip ring or wound rotor so this is slip ring or wound rotor is having uh and see yeah so this is slip ring rotor this is a slip ring rotor this is a cage rotor this is stator so say stator is a hollow cylindrical structure in which the inner periphery is punched with the slots and a three phase distributed winding is placed okay so this is a terminal box all these connections have come here at the terminal and from there the supply has been given so this is the outer cover this is yoke okay and behind this overhang portion of the winding this is called overhang portion okay so that is core these are slots okay. so this is winding so winding is here made up of copper so in slip ring this is lifting eye lifting eye means hook just to hook it this is base plate so here you can observe that slip ring rotor is having wound rotor slip ring rotor is having the slots punched on the outer periphery okay the slots punched on the outer periphery and in the slots a three phase distributed winding is placed okay so here we have a three phase distributed winding and these three phase distributed winding is connected each phase to one slip ring okay here it will come it will connect to one slip ring one phase to one slip ring second phase to second slip ring third phase to third slip ring so these three are permanent connections it is shown like this but it will be internally connected at the back now these three slip rings are provided with brushes these three slip rings are provided with brushes and these brushes are used to connect the external resistance circuit ring and short circuit end okay and it is short circuit end okay uh, no weather what is the time 36 it will look like this
approach and this is the slip ring rotor okay so where you can observe all these three uh, what we see phase windings all these three phase windings are connected to this slip ring okay at one end these are connected to the slip ring on the other end it is connected to the external circuitry so from here we can connect this to external resistance this is called rotor resistance and this rotor resistance is short circuited why it is short circuited we will see in the principle why we use external resistance we will see in the torque equation okay so this is shaft this is slot rotor slot this is rotor winding because winding is placed in the rotor it is called wound rotor okay so these are carbon brushes carbon is a soft material therefore we use carbon brushes we don't use metal brushes yes and these are slip rings so this is the rotor structure of the wound rotor and observe the rotor slots are not parallel to the shaft they are skewed okay rotor shafts are not parallel to the shaft axis okay this this is the shaft axis rotor slots are skewed like this okay the reason for skewed rotor slots is to avoid magnetic locking that will come in uh, next part future part skewed rotor slots avoid magnetic locking or it is also known as cogging it is also known as cogging okay so this is the structure of wound rotor of an induction motor okay compulsorily all the induction motor rotors are short circuited i cannot keep the winding open if i keep the winding open induction motor will not run why it won't run we'll look uh, we'll study that when we study the principle of induction motor okay so this is wound rotor the other type of rotor is cage rotor okay so in cage rotor instead of placing the winding in the rotor slots we place thick rotor bars or thick copper bars and those are braced using end rings on both ends so these are copper bars thick copper bars which are placed one bar per slot and these are braced using end rings so these two are end rings copper end rings okay uh, because when it is framed this way it will form a cage structure it is known as cage rotor and in the olden days such cages were used to catch the quirls and keep them inside hence it is known as squirrel cage rotor there is no any scientific reason why it is called squirrel cage such kind of cages were used to hold the squirrels hence the name squirrel cage okay so and this structure will form a cage structure it is known as squirrel cage rotor okay uh in each slot instead of keeping the winding in the rotor slots we keep single rotor bar each slot and those rotor bars are braced at the end okay so that it will form a short circuited rotor the reason for bracing the rotor bars at the end is to form the short circuited rotor and when such rotor is placed inside the slots in the armature core it will form this kind of structure Okay. so in a squirrel cage rotor i can't see rotor bars rotor bars are placed inside the slots and those are braced with end rings at the end okay those are braced with end rings at the end you can observe 
the slots are skewed again here and this part of the ring you can see a aluminium ring on both edges so this is end ring aluminium ring this is end ring and these copper bars or aluminium bars if the machine is small we use aluminium bars if the machine is large we use copper bars so those aluminium bars are placed inside the slots this is these are not the slots okay uh, if you exactly see how the rotor uh, construction of the uh, quaged rotor is it will be like this instead of placing slots they are punched with holes okay. the holes are punched to form the slots okay. then the rotor bars are placed in each slot then this is completely brazed with an end ring if you see the cross section of a rotor conduct a rotor a squirrel cage rotor it will be like this so this end ring is visible at these ends where bars are not visible uh, once the rotor is fully constructed and placed in the state so these are the two types of induction motor rotors which we use for the various applications okay so cage rotor is very strong okay this is mechanically strong mechanically cage rotor is very strong so in heavy load applications where there is large load variations and heavy load applications we use cage rotor okay slip ring rotor are used where we need larger starting torque used where large starting torques are needed Okay. So slipping motor have a small amount of maintenance because for a period of time these brushes will wear out and there may be a loose contact between the slipping and brush and maybe after some time we have to change the slipping also because of wear and tear but whereas for cage rotor there is no maintenance once it is fixed it will run for its life until it is broken down okay so this is all about the construction of induction motor three phase induction motor in the next class i will be briefly uh, giving you the principle of operation because without dealing all these things i cannot go directly to torque slip characteristics your syllabus starts from torque slip characteristics uh, without giving the brief of these things uh, even i will not be having confidence to go to the torque slip characteristics so first i have to explain what is torque what, uh, sorry what is a slip then we have to see what is torque then we have to see what is torque slip characteristic okay so with this construction we'll end today's session in the next lecture we will see the principle of operation then after that we'll look into the further things and when i ask any question few people